Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the stream. So, uh, yeah, last, uh, last week when we were working on uh, Vectrexy, we fixed a problem with uh, the way I was handling IRQ. And after the stream, I started doing some reading because I was wondering why, why had I actually implemented it this way? Hey, Lisp Gamer. Okay, so we see that the text is working this time. <laughs> I was working. I'm, I'm good. Uh, how are you doing? <clears throat> a bit tired. I, I think I'm getting a bit sick. You're under the weather? Nah. I think it's our crazy weather, man. But yeah, that's it. You're, you're actually feeling under the weather. I think I'm, I'm getting sick, so I don't know if I'm going to make it through this week and be able to stream again, but we'll see. So yeah, um, we fixed we fixed it last week, this bug, um, where we would play Bedlam, and then when we were... were uh, finished one round like we would die and we would try to play again it wasn't working and uh, in the end the 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 issue which was a you know a simple fix difficult to, to figure out but easy to fix of course was uh, was it this one here yeah basically when when IRQ is enabled and it's not masked out um, what I was doing was I was pushing this the the CC state, so that's the uh, control codes or the flags. So I would push all of those, including the CC itself, right? Well, I mean, not including, sorry. I would push the CC state and uh, then set the interrupt mask to one so that nothing could interrupt it. But of course, the problem with that is that when IRQ was, when the, uh, the interrupt uh, handler, the ISR was finished, it would call RTI and then that would pop the CC state which would bring it back to zero, which of course meant that um, we, it, we were now open again to having another interrupt occur, uh, which is not correct. And so we, you know, it, it's not logical actually. So what I did is I just literally flipped, switched these two lines so that we set CT interrupt mass to one and push that state. Um, this way, when we when we're done and we pop it, it remains one. And if somebody, if like the CPU wants to raise another IRQ, it has to explicitly set, set the interrupt mass to zero. That's basically the contract, or at least one that seems sensible to me. But it's not what I had read. So I went back after the stream and looked, you know, where had I gotten this information? And sure enough, I got it on, um, in this book here, let me just go, go to it. This is like the main book I've been using. To implement most of the CPU. Okay, so that's FIRQ, so it must be up here very close by. Or not. FIRQ. Okay, here it is. IRQ. So you see here, if you look at what this book says, it says, um, you know, if and only if the I bit is clear, which makes sense, so we're not masking the interrupts. Then, and it goes and says, what you need to do is you need to push actually all of these registers, then set E to, to say that we've pushed the entire state. Um, and then, then it says push the CCR. And then it says set I to mask further interrupts, right? And then after that, it says, now we set the PC to the value in the, uh, in the uh, IRQ, uh, <clears throat> The, the IRQ vector locations. So it says right here that you're supposed to set, it, it would set I after having pushed CC, the CCR, the condition code register, but this is wrong. Uh, and nowhere does it talk about it, you know? And then I went to go check RTI to see if there was any notes about that. Even in the RTI, it doesn't mention anything about the fact that when it pops CCR, the interrupt mask would be one. So then I looked in another book. This is one I, I use a little bit less because it's a little bit less user friendly. But in this one, it actually has the right information. So I found this section about the interrupt response. 
And what it says is it says 6809 checks the current status of the interrupt system at the end of each instruction. If an interrupt input is active and enabled, the response is as follows. So it says the CPU disables the maskable interrupt. That's the first thing that it says, right? That is, it sets bit four, the I flag of the condition code register. So it sets it to one. If the active in input is FI or Q or NMI, the CPU also disables the fast interrupt. That is, it sets bit six, the F flag of the condition code register. So we haven't really handled FI or Q or NMI just yet, but that's the next step. So basically it sets, set, the first thing it does is, is it sets the bits to disable interrupts in the CCR. Then if the CPU is not executing CWAI or sync, we will discuss those instructions later. It clears the E flag in response to FIRQ and sets it otherwise. Okay, so again, this has to do with FIRQ. Then it says the CPU saves either the program counter and the condition code register if it's IRFIR, if, I, if the input is FIRQ or all the reg user registers, any other input instruction in the hardware stack. So right there you see it, right? Step one, set bits for uh, masking out interrupts. And then afterwards, push all the, the, the registers. And then it goes it goes on to say, like, um, let me see, is this in? No, then that's it. It just continues to talk about how setting the E flag, the entire flag, based on whether I had to push all the state or not. Um, and then after that, it talks about setting the program counter to the value in the uh, interrupt vector table. So, so yeah, there you go. So this book basically um, has the right information and it and I'm glad because it, it coincides with what I figured must be the right implementation, which is to set this f first um, before, uh, actually no, it's not the right place. To set, sorry, that's it. To set this first before we push all the registers. So that's good. Um, and I took some notes about it. I, I actually copied that section here and I wrote exactly what I just shared with everyone here. Uh, and I'm gonna keep this around. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this around so that, um, that when I actually, if I have to implement FIRQ or NMI, that I'm equipped to do so. Just give me one second. Things work better like that? Like what? You mean? Yes, uh, this this actually fixed Bedlam. So la last time I was playing, um, see this game here. I'm just gonna fast forward through it. So this is a game that you know I had gotten working. <clears throat> yeah, it fixed my bug. So I'd gone working, you know, like we were able to play it and everything seemed fine. I was very happy, but then I'll fast forward here. Then I would die, right? And I'm like, then I'd come back to the main screen. And if when I would try and play again, this wouldn't happen. I would just get like this dot in the middle. Uh, and it was actually the same behavior I was getting before I had properly implemented IRQ. So I knew that it had something to do with interrupt uh, handlers, but that's it. I spent the whole stream last time debugging this game and trying to figure out what was going on, and um, and that's it. I stumbled upon the fact that it was kind of odd uh, that IRQ, the IRQ bit, was zero instead of one after we were done our ISR, meaning that once the ISR was finished, I would have expected the the. Uh, it made sense in my mind that the we shouldn't be masking out or, or we should be masking out sorry irqs it's always confusing because like negative terminology but basically setting setting that irq bit to one means masking it out um, and it should be that way after the isr completes but it was not that way and that seemed strange uh, and then that kind of led me to figuring out that that what must have been the problem so so yeah i'm very happy about that now What's next? To be honest, I don't really know what's what's next. I uh, 
I was kind of... I almost didn't stream tonight because I was not feeling super well. So I didn't put too much thought into what I should work on next. I still have my to-do list here with a whole bunch of things I could work on. But I guess I was thinking I'll just try and see uh, what other games are not working and maybe just take it from there. So what I've been doing for the last little while. Um, so let's come back to our compatibility. <clears throat> Like I'm mainly focusing, like there's always these multiple versions. I'm looking just at the first version to see if I can get at least the base version of most of these working. Some of these I'm kind of skipping, like we got 3D Mindstorm to basically work um, and 3D Narrow Escape. I'm not gonna do this one here because these are like light pen, uh, light pen games. I'm just gonna ignore those for now. Armor Attack works. Art Master is another light pen game. So now Bedlam works, Berserk works, Blitz as well. So Clean Sweep doesn't. Um, so Clean Sweep is kind of interesting. It, it sort of works. Like I mean, it doesn't really work. I get this this uh, assertion from my about something invalid. But if I kind of ignore it, you sort of see it work. But what I've read from uh, Malban's website like he has like a blog post about clean sweep It turns out that it's like one of the most complicated ROMs to get working because it's like super tiny timing based um, it, it from what I read from uh, on his blog uh, it, it effectively ignores Like it doesn't use the BIOS routines to handle its vector drawing and it does it its own thing And I think that, that it does it so that it can draw so many lines per screen lines and dots to make the whole grid because it's like a pac-man game and uh, so in order to optimize that, they like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Just got like a, an assertion here. Um, and so in order to do that, they wrote their own routines and it's really, really tight, you know, in terms of timing. And so here you can kind of see like the basic um, lines here. And if I kind of just forcibly continue, you can see that like, you can see it's kind of drawing the screen, right? So if I sort of, if I was able to just ignore these, I think it would maybe even work. But it's really odd these these kind of uh, errors I'm getting here, the is in range errors here. Let's see here, exception caught, assertion failed, is in range, read from unmapped range. So it's not these read from these reads. It's okay that that happens. But it's this exception here. I, I should put a breakpoint and see exactly. Because I'm not giving enough information here. Condition is in range. Memory map. Like I'm getting something really odd. It would seem. Now let's, let's take a look. Maybe maybe we'll figure this out. 26. So it's this one here. You're asking if they are timing access. Um, yeah, I mean, I think they know, like that's it, they're relying on the number of cycles that they know things take and they're trying to keep it as tight as possible. Um, from from what I've read, it's, it's very kind of dangerous to do this with the Vectrex because there are, since it's like a lot of analog components, there are variations between different models of the Vectrex. And so to keep things safe there's certain thresholds that you want to put in there to like allow for some of the analog components that don't work exactly the same way across the board you want to kind of give them give the worst case enough time um, to do things correctly like for example uh, some components take a little longer to charge or discharge right it's not exactly equal across the board and so you want to always code against the, the worst case and that's what the bios does all these bios routines that deal with the analog hardware have these extra delays in there for the worst case. And so games that take control and do, do their own thing uh, run the risk of not working correctly across all hardware. Um, however, I think Clean Sweep probably you know, managed to get it 
to work across all hardware, but is as tight as it gets. So, okay, let me, uh, let me think if I can make this a bit more clear. Sorry, range second. This is actually a game that I own, Clean Sweep. So it would be nice if I if I got this one working. It's actually really fun. In, more, in, in many ways, I find it more fun than Pac-Man, which is clearly what it is a clone of. Not running that one. Here, let's, let's set up our, our environment to debug. Clean sweep here. So we're trying to read DDD4. How does this happen? I forgot to put my dollar sign here.
This is so annoying. Don't understand why this happens. Oh yeah, that's right. It's not the optimize. It's the no inline. I always forget this. That's the problem here. We want to we want to tell it not to inline the function. I think I have to do that in here. That would make sense. Still not. <laughs> the break one hit no X for code debugger. Deckle spec no inline should ensure. So I need to like combine it with no optimize. It's possible. Assert is here, but my if is not. That doesn't really make sense. Compare, compare. F zero E five here. Okay, this is where the assert handles its thing. So why is my if getting compiled? So weird. theory that it's getting optimized because the yeah I think what was happening is the fact that I had this assert that was checking if it is in range the body of, of the assert actually throws an exception and I think that the optimizer was able to reason that if it would throw an exception when this condition is true then it's impossible for the opposite condition like I'm saying, sorry, if it throws for it when this is false, um, then it's impossible for this code to be reached. And I think it would actually remove this code. Which is some pretty cool optimization, except when you're trying to debug something, right? Um, so just by removing the assert now, we actually are able to put a breakpoint here. So that's, that's kind of good. 
But see, what bothers me is that I said optimize off here. But it looks like, you know, we're trying to disable certain, like optimization doesn't actually remove all of them. So I don't know, unless I'm, I'm totally off here. But that's what it looks like. All right, so here we go. DDD4, now what are we getting this from? Read indexed EA. Yeah, no, it can be clever, right? And this looks like a, one of those instances where it is being clever. But what bothers me is, you know, Visual Studio and MSVC, right? They, they have these, these um, pragmas like optimize off and optimize on. And you would think that when you put that, that it would not aggressively optimize it to that point, right? But then again, you know, who knows how these optimization flags, like how they work internally and what exactly they apply to. Maybe this optimization comes at a, a different point and maybe it's done from the front end and not the back end, you know, I don't know. So, all right, so let's see, can we make some sense of this? We've got a instruction here that Let's see, it's, it's a compare instruction, but it's a compare in indexed mode, and more than that, it's indirect indexed. And it has put together an effective address. Where, uh, let's see here, oh, everything's optimized out. DDD4, DDD4, why are we going to the BIOS here? BIOS ROM, does that make sense? Yes, it does. Doesn't make sense. Why? Why are we in the BIOS here? Find device for DDD4. Come in, Cooper. Do you copy? Forget about Freeman. We're abandoning the base. Get the hell out of there. Right, okay. So it's like memory I have not mapped yet. Which I shouldn't be doing that. Memory map, let's see here. So the first half is mapped here. And here to C7FF, C800 to CFFF. Then I have D00 to D7FF. Then I have, no, this is D800. So actually it should have been in the illegal range. Why didn't it find this? Oh, because I don't have a device mapped there. Ah, right. I have unmapped, but I don't have illegal. Both via and RAM. <laughs> Would they actually be doing that on purpose? So this is the first time I get a game that is trying to access memory in this specific range, this so-called illegal range. And in this range, via and RAM are both selected, like the in terms of like in terms of the memory address lines. And I haven't really read what that means, like in terms of how does it, how would it behave? Um, so 
So either that's what's happening or there's a bug where this compare, this indirect... I mean, I, I don't think so because we've, we've had instructions that, that do this already. It's not the first time, but maybe. Okay, so what I'm going to do, just as a test, So you have this unmapped memory device here, right? I'm gonna write an illegal memory device. I'm gonna call it that, and we'll we'll make it uh, map to that piece of memory that I, like this r range of memory I have not mapped yet. And we'll just make it do the same thing as unmapped memory here. In fact, yeah. At, just for now, because it's gonna behave in the same. Oh no, it won't. Okay, I'll just write. I'll just write another one. I'm gonna try and be clever. There's no, there's no need to be clever here. So unmapped memory device. I'll call this illegal memory device. So Lisp Gamer asks, do they, do they do it as a short delay? It's possible. It's possible. Um, for now, I'm just going to do what I do for the unmapped memory, which is I'll spit out an error, but allow it to continue. It basically calls this undefined function I have, and like I have a policy about what, what to do, and by default, I just log. Um, I could fail on it but I don't because I, there's a lot of ROMs that seem to do illegal things, but it's fine. And in my shipping build, I will eventually just ignore so we don't get any any noise. But for now, I just because I'm curious to see what we get, I just let it log and keep going. And that there's a lot of games that actually have illegal accesses in there. Uh, although this is the first one that I get in this specific range, because this range, you know, can do some weird things. All right, so let's let's hook that up. I gotta go to main here. So that, that should be it. So now we shouldn't get, because it was trying to access the BIOS um, because I did not, not have a device mapped to that range. And now it should go through this illegal memory device and, uh, and continue just, and just give us warnings about it. Okay, so there we go. So lots and lots of, of output here. And you can see if I like, if I stop, it's these read from illegal range, read from unmapped range. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change our policy because I think we're gonna, we're, we're like printf IO bound kind of thing. So we'll go into error handler and we'll just change our policy to ignore so let's see if we're not actually doing printfs how this behaves
Hey, not bad. Something's happening. <laughs> but yeah, the lines are definitely not correct. So you see, basically you're like a vacuum cleaner and you're eating these pellets. And at one point, see, now I'm full. My bag is full and I gotta go to the center and empty my bag so that I can start eating uh, these pellets again. Oops. Yeah, so like all the lines are totally off. So definitely that I have some timing issues. I mean, it doesn't completely surprise me. I know that, that my, like this game, if it's really, really tight on timings, um, there's certainly gonna be some issues. But still kind of happy that we're close. We're not, it's not like crazy off here, you know? Like you can see that these, all of these lines that are horizontal should just be like shift it to the right a little bit or maybe it's the vertical lines that should be kind of shifted to the left no I, I guess I don't know yeah it seems like it's the horizontal lines that need to be shifted because you're just kind of looking at the overlay here and the positioning of everything um, these were shifted to the right yeah it doesn't, it doesn't look too bad yeah so it's got something to do with the timing uh, the way I handle timing for moving the beam most likely. There's some delay, I know for a fact that there's some delays that are missing. In fact, I might have some to-dos in here about it. Let me see. I don't think it's this. Maybe I'm misremembering it, but like I remember reading about, there's some delays I'm maybe not handling correctly, or might be related to the shift register, or there's some a couple of, of cycles I'm not quite getting right. And we get away with it because of uh, the fact that most games use the BIOS, and like like I was saying earlier, that, that there's a lot of extra time given for things to get to the right place. But if it's like super, super tight, the movement of the beam, like it, like it is in this game, it doesn't surprise me that we, we end up with some offsets that are not quite right. Like a good test would be to see if this game works any better with a VEC-X CPU. In fact, before I even do that, let's just see if it works at all with VEC-X. So we take a clean sweep. Why do I keep making that mistake? There. What happens if you add a couple of cycles in the read of the illegal pages? So the reads for the illegal pages, that's a good point. Am I gonna get... I'm trying to think. What I was gonna say is I'm pretty sure that, that, that I am getting the number, I am emitting the number of cycles that that, that read would incur. You know, uh, I'm not like, I should not be aborting anything and like losing cycles because let's say we go into this illegal memory here when a read occurs i return a value of zero but this doesn't throw any exceptions right now so it just continues as though it read and it read zero and that instruction however many cycles it's supposed to take it would return those that many cycles 
So I don't think it's going to take extra time to read from this illegal memory range. You know, so I am actually emitting the, the, the supposed correct number of cycles from that perspective. Okay, so what you're seeing on the screen there is the VECX output from that emulator. Just a reminder that I have to do this kind of special overlay for OBS because VECX will not render on my secondary monitor. Oops, and that did not work because I have to do dash C. Cannot open clean sweep? Why? Oh yeah, gotta remove the quotes. I, I go through this every single time. So VECX has the same problem I do. In fact, it's, it looks even worse, right? Because the way those pellets are drawn, look, there's a lot of them that are really crooked. But, but very similar. It's got a very similar uh, look to, to mine. So that's interesting. So that this is this is like like I said, you know, how cycle accurate am I in the Via? And it doesn't surprise me that I'm not. It kind of reminds me of how um, when I play uh, what's the game um, Berserk, we notice that the the characters are more squished. And I have a couple of games where we notice that like some things are not quite the right size, um, and it, it definitely has to do with with timing. I think it's things like. I'm doing some things where I'm, I'm not introducing the, the, the right number of cycle delays in some places. So I'd have to kind of go back and revisit this code and make sure it's, it's, it would be in here. So it's like stuff like this, you know, when the integrator gets enabled, there's actually some time, that's it. I have like, basically, I assume that as soon as you turn on the beam, it starts moving right away. Whereas in reality, there's a little bit of a delay, right? For when, it, when the beam is not moving to, it kind of speeds up, it accelerates to its max speed and then starts moving and I, and I, I think even when you stop, there's a little deceleration time, and I'm not actually emulating that kind of movement. So I wouldn't be surprised if if Malban's uh, vid emulator here, vday or whatever it's called, um, emulates it correctly, because he actually is the one who wrote that blog posting about it. So let's let's take a look. Let's take a look at how he handles it. <clears throat> so let's have it here. Clean. Oh, that's not the right one. Oh, 
Okay, so this is clean sweep. Even this one has a couple of... This is way better than mine. I mean, that actually works, right? But you can see... But you know what? I bet you this is what it looks like on the real thing. Those slight offsets in there. I'd have to like grab my Vectrex and, and see. I don't I don't know if it was perfect. I mean it's even possible that it's just that it can't be perfect. This is pretty good though. Yeah, this is pretty good. So that's what it's supposed to look like. I can find that that article. Uh, Malban Clean Sweep. <laughs> so you see the the the, 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 the 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 blog post is called Vectrex Emulators: Why We Hate Clean Sweep. Because it brings Vectrex to do something that we don't understand, which is not yet calculable. Let me tell you how Clean Sweep draws its maze. Look at that picture. Red colors. So up here. First it draws the right vertical outer maze wall, top down. It draws the right vertical outer maze. Then it draws the left horizontal outer maze, here and then here. Then it draws 13 inner vertical stripes. These are generated to RAM locations since they contain the eatable dots in the maze top down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, so thirteen columns here of eatable dots. Then it draws oh no, then then it draws the eight horizontal maze walls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wall seven counting from top to bottom. Wall seven. Well, I don't know what wall seven is. Is oh no, wall seven is also a RAM vector since it includes the shuttable door pink. So this this wall here has shuttable doors in here, whereas up there, they're, okay, these doors are over here, okay. Um, Clean Sweep uses an own, uses its own drawn, drawing routine for the maze. All above vectors use this routine. For convenience, let's call this routine draw maze vector. So that we know what we, we talk about, let us assume the following is a correct assembly of that routine. Also, you can see a complete runnable version of Clean Sweep maze draw. In short terms, the routine first moves to a start point. The start point is always one of topmost position of the maze, leftmost position of the maze, seen from the maze point of view. The positioning is done old school and very move to D alike. It uses some more delays, but that's fine. It that and then it then sets T1 to interrupt mode. Ah, which basically means it disables the T1 control of orb bit 7 okay yes and for its vector drawing it enables and disables the ramp manually okay which is I do support this and this is actually how text is drawn and in fact if I'm not mistaken my text isn't exactly accurate like as an example if we let's say reboot this how do we I'll just stop this one and I'll grab my emulator. Just want to get past the screen here. So that's my font. And oh, it's very difficult to compare when it's so dark. Let's see here. So you see how like this text is slightly more italicized than mine? 
that might make that might be like all the difference, you know. Um, let's see. Keep going. I think I'm like using up all my CPU here. Here too, we can see the difference. So my point is that when it comes to rendering, um, we're using the T1, like disabling the T1 interrupt. What that basically means is uh, now it, it's we're at the mercy of how the beam moves. And since font, like writing text it's, you know, the, the difference between my t cycles being off is just whether or not the font is slightly more italicized or not. It doesn't show that much. And this mode is usually used for font writing. Um, but in cases like here, where it's actually used to draw the entire, entire map, the entire maze, uh, it becomes much more obvious that I have some errors or like some cycle inaccuracies. It gets its inputs from value from the length of the vector and a pointer to a vector list. The vector list does not consist of coordinates, it's a number equals length of list of shift register values. This means the maze is more something like a really widespread raster image. The raster image has exactly, and it, it, that's the whole point is when you have a kind of a raster, just like for fonts, you wanna do it uh, this way. You, you disable the interrupt mode. The, the T1 control of the ramp, so you, you, you do it yourself. You don't want the timer to control when the ramp turns on and off, and the ramp is used to control the beam. So yeah, this is the mode that's, that's used for raster displays. So the raster image has a size of 0f times 13. After each of these raster lines is drawn, the routine is finished and leaves it with a reset zero. The raster is blown up. Each shift registry, register entry is an 8-bit value. But the complete drawing of one shift register takes 19 cycles. That means the shift register is only used for the first 16 of these 19 cycles and keeps drawing with the last bit of that shift reg value till it is reloaded. Hmm. Okay. So where is the problem? Part one. The problem seems to be that ramp is not controlled by the timer, but manually, yeah. When ramp gets activated, the shift register has a value of zero, nothing is drawn, but the integrators do already integrate. Before the first shift register value is used, the ramp is already integrating for 19 cycles. When you look at the picture, the pretty, the pretty blue lines mark the starting point of the ramp, well, approximately, up here. No, that's better. So he's saying the blue lines, so I guess he's talking about these ones here. So before the first reg shift register value is used, the ramp is already integrating for 19 cycles. Okay, why is it 19? I thought it was 18. I know I do 18 cycles because that's also what I read in the yeah, shift le cycles left is 18 here. Why 19? I'm curious. I don't think I can actually put 19. We can try. Just curious. Let's just see what happens. Definitely the shift register changes a lot of things in terms of timing so this, this probably won't work but we'll see oh, 
the font hasn't changed at all. Okay, it did not look any different. Let's try 20. I think it actually looks worse. <laughs> let's put let's put a smaller value just to see what happens. It's interesting. There's almost like no change in the font rendering. It looks exactly the same. Have fun, go to bed. Have a good night. Thanks, man. Take it easy. Okay, let me just keep reading. You have horizontal and vertical vectors and you want to start the maze at a corner, not at a crossing. Obviously, while drawing vertical lines, X integration is zero and Y integration is summing up. Horizontal lines is the opposite. The developers now had an efficient drawing routine for a huge raster image maze thing, thing, maze thingy, but with the problem that after positioning correctly, the Vectrex beam began to move before drawing. At one time it began beforehand to moving vertically, the other time it began to move horizontally, and they somehow had to start those lines somewhere that the overhead could be compensated. Oh, I see. The solution the developers came up with is twofold. Not only did they use an overhead for the starting position, they also used different scale factors for positioning. So outer, outer vertical maze is positioned with scale 80, speed 56. Inner horizontal maze is positioned with scale 78, speed 69. My guess is they used trial and error on Vectrex and just happened to use values where th those lines do match. I wouldn't have a clue how they would have calculated the difference. Still, why is that a problem? Why, do, why doesn't the emulators do that right? Because the analog hardware is just that analog. At least I do not have enough data to figure out how that analog hardware reacts in all different circumstances. Maybe the RAM signal is delayed when switched on. Maybe the RAM signal is delayed when switched off or both or with different timing values. Maybe integrators need a timing parameter before they can integrate again. Maybe such a timing is different for the degree or sign of voltage they receive. The original dis disassembly of the, the ROM suggests something like that, C move to D. Maybe the drift of the integrators is relevant, maybe the drift of integrators gets greater the higher the absolute value that they have already stored. Maybe the power up phase of the integrators must be calculated, perhaps they differ for different values. What is the solution? Timing. Definitive. It is a timing. Def definitely, it is a timing issue. The only thing is what to time, how, and when. I have been able to counter every single faulty behavior I encountered in the emulator by fiddling with the timing parameters. <laughs> the only thing I have not found is I have not found the one that is a solution to all issues. And I hate to check the CRC of a ROM and switch the solution for that specific ROM. That seems pretty lame. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Note, the following is in vid not correct anymore since with the change of the shift register emulation, timing settings differ. The overall concept stays the same, so for now I leave the images. So here we go. With no timing tweaks, see this looks a lot like mine, doesn't it? Vid examples with added timing. So he's got these delays for the ramp. Very interesting. Ramp on delay and ramp off delay. So he did do some, that's super interesting. I guess we could do that.
The Vectrex start screen does look perfect with these settings also. See, that's because the Vectrex start screen is mostly a raster because it's doing text. But there are still other timing issues which are not fixed by this trick to be continued. It's really a gold mine, this, this, this website. Trying to think about how these delays are put in. It's just basically waiting before moving and waiting before stopping the beam. The waiting before moving, so it's a little bit of a little bit of a state machine I have to have. slightly complexify the code. Let me think. So basically we're talking about right here. And about what we do with position. So it'd be something like <clears throat> something like if we had a uh, what we call this uh, what did he call it? Ramp on, ramp off. I'm going to call it ramp up. And let's say ramp up, ramp on, and ramp down. Kind of confusing because of the word ramp up, but okay, let's go with this. Let's say that's the beam phase, or let's call this the ramp phase, I guess. that were stopped as well. Ramp off, then, up, then we go up, then we go on, and then we go down, and then go back to off. So we start off like this. All right. So in here, If integrators are enabled, actually, maybe I'll do this a bit differently.
say we're off, then if integrators are enabled, means we don't want to draw until we've moved for a little while. That's what it means. Break here. Now if we're on and not integrators enabled, ramp down okay switch again on the ramp phase now we want all four cases where if we are actually so if we're ramping up then we need to do uh, wait S some cycles. We'll do something here. Then go to ramp on. Here we draw. So here what we do is we actually do this. ramping down, then uh, we still draw, so if we're on or we're ramping down, we continue to draw, but specifically, I want to do fall through. could do it this way. To do wait some cycles, then go to ramp off. And then here we explicitly fall through. So something like this. Now obviously I'm missing the wait some cycles. So for now, let's say we don't wait cycles and we just say ramp phase becomes ramp on. Now if I do that, I'm gonna lose at least one frame, which will already mess up some of the cycle timing. Now we are doing cycle by cycle in here, so we can be pretty precise. even say go to ramp on here. No? Okay, let's say we allow it to take one cycle to get to that. So we'll ramp up. We'll go to this, take one extra cycle for now, because anyways, we'll take some number of cycles. And if we're ramping down, we want the ramp phase to become ramp off. Now we'll get one extra cycle of drawing there for now. And then finally,
yeah, I think that's it. I think this is the little state machine that we need to implement ramping up and ramping down. Oh yes. Okay, so for the most part, it looks pretty much the same. We only, we only introduce one extra cycle for up and down, which is not really showing up too much. So let's see, let's try and put some delays in there. So now I need, I need some variables for those kinds of delays. right yeah now what we do is we'll say Integer. We go to ramp up and we set the. No, I'm just going to call this ramp delay. So ramp phase goes to ramp up and we give ourselves. I don't know. Well, how many cycles was he putting here? five cycles for ramp up and like nine down. Okay, let's try five up. Uh, okay. Otherwise, if we're going down, yeah, I'll use his timings. So if we bring it down and we've reached zero, we go to ramp on. And here's the opposite. If we bring it down and we reach zero, we go to ramp off. Interesting to see now what happens. <laughs> okay, that's very interesting. What do you know? The maze actually does look better. The font looks awful. It's very interesting. But actually not the game is playable. Oh man, that's funny. Very interesting. A little disheartening though, but... This feels like as if there's something else going on here. So let's let's do something. Let's make these delays. We'll put them on. Um, I don't think I've exposed that yet anywhere else, but if we use imgui, I should be able to uh, 
Do I have any MGUI stuff anywhere outside of here? GL render, I have them in the engine. Okay, let's, let's put these on MGUI sliders and have some fun with that. So ramp up delay. Right now we have it to five. Ramp down delay. We have it at nine. Now we'll put some sliders on those. And GUI slider, the slider int. I need to do an include here. int what's int 2 okay slider int ramp up delay address of ramp up delay we'll say 0 to 10 we'll do the same thing for ramp down and then we'll use these here actually compile though for no it's not gonna like that for MGUI right it really doesn't want that okay we will have to cast or make ramp delay and in 32 yeah that's fine okay let's run this out we don't want this in a loop um, let's put this up here I guess whatever do we really want them static yes we do right I guess it is because it's static. That's... That doesn't make sense. Oh yes, okay, right, of course. Thinking about the way MGUI works, this update is being called many, many, many times before we, you know, per frame. And we need to do this exactly once per frame. Do we have a way? Do we, I don't think we have a call of once per frame here.
Yeah, that's true. Basically, the problem is, is that is that the way it works is the via here, its update function gets called. You know, we have this loop where, um, you know, in one frame we will execute as many instructions as will fill the delta time, and so that means that we will call execute instruction many many times per frame and we will we'll call for each one of those we'll be calling an update on the via with the number of cycles and so we don't have a you know single frame call like a single frame update i would have to introduce like a you know frame update or something <clears throat> and like kind of do like a thing where here in update I might have to like start thinking about renaming some of these functions to kind of make it more clear which of these are frame updates versus you know um, updates that occur multiple times per frame so maybe a little bit of renaming would be required here but like here I would have to do something like, uh, let's see here. If I did this, that would give me a chance to set those variables once. statics up here but I will make them data members move this into the frame update let's see if that works so I don't have this problem in my GL render code because that the update there does get called once per frame. Okay, so there we go. Let me make this a bit bigger. So here we can see ramp up has a, an effect there. The ramp down clearly has a massive effect on the horizontal. See, unfortunately, the text is so heavily affected by the ramp down. But you know what? This here, I bet you this would fix maybe the scaling that we see on uh, those characters in uh, that game. The effect is so pronounced. I almost wonder if I didn't do this right. Let me see.
I'm noticing that maybe I need slightly larger range even just to get this to look right. Let me give a, a bit more range to the to my values here. Let's put 20. Like, this looks pretty good, you know? But, like, the font rendering is really way off. though but it seems like I can't get it to be perfect but even in uh, in Melbourne's it's not perfect it looks actually this looks this looks really similar to what I have like except his font looks good so I wonder if that has something to do with the shift register emulation pause this for a sec so like here now top here a little bit to the left uh, although I'm missing oh no it's because I used that one okay it's not quite the same something like this So maybe 7-Eleven. Oh, but then I... Let me try something. Let me, let me also introduce... Let me mess around a little bit with the shift delay. Cycles are like what, what do I call this? Like uh, max or um,
Yeah, you can't initialize like this. Unless it's const. or something. All right, let's see if, if this has any effect. I am really wondering about those shift cycles. Actually, I think the lowest should be 16, but anyway. Okay, no, so this shift doesn't have any kind of positive effect here. Okay, so when I think about how rendering for the font works, The way it works is that it goes, it moves the beam to the left, then it starts to move to the right, and then it draws these lines. And when it's done, it goes down, then back to the left. And so if the ramp down delay would make it take longer, ramp down. When we move down, it makes it take longer to stop, which is probably why it introduces, yeah, it makes, it makes the, would it make it more italicized? It's just so pronounced. try even when integrators are disabled sure let me think here is there anything I'm missing
So one thing I'm not really handling is what happens if the integrator state changes while we're ramping down or ramping up. That's true. I, I need to... So let's say we're either, either if we're ramping off or ramping down. I need to go back up. I don't know if this will make a difference. It depends on how it's used, but... And uh, similarly, if we are ramping up or ramping on. So while we're going up, while we are on or on our way up, if integrators get disabled, now we go to ramp down. So maybe this will make some difference. Let's see. Okay, so that did not change anything. But this still seemed more correct. Try something here. I'm gonna put another switch case here. Oops. So this handles the going up from to up or to down. This goes from up to on and from down to off. And in the same cycle, once we've been turned on or off, we can now make sure to draw when we're supposed to draw. Again, I don't think this will make much difference, but I do like not waiting an extra frame when switching states. Are we able to tweak these while it plays in, in this emulator? Let's find out. Okay, so it looks like it changed quite a bit. 
Oh, this must be the 19 he was talking about. There's like an extra cycle bef like an extra cycle before the ship register starts. Huh. Okay, that's interesting. Blank on, blank off. Wow, he has a lot of cycles here, a lot of delays. This must explain things. I'm, there is more to it than just the ramp up and ramp down cycles. Interestingly, his font doesn't go all italicized like mine does when messing around with this. So that's kind of fascinating, isn't it? Oh, well there is an italicize, but in the different direction from mine. So it's become like as if it needs these delays. What could that be? Interesting. What's this XSH? Well, I know this starts to behave a bit more like mine. This this XSH seems to offset the effect of the. Oh, that's really interesting. So this this is the key here. There's a delay for whatever this XSH is. YSH, ZSH, SSH, RSH, and XSH. See, like this, this be behaves more like mine. When this is at zero, then these delays introduce this ma massive wonkiness in the font render. What is XSH? I mean, I'm guessing it has something to do with the X integrator. There's Y, there's Z, which is brightness. Shift. If I bring the, all the timings to zero, this looks like what my emulator looks like with no timing differences. So that's that's encouraging, right? Now, if you bring up the ramp here 
to like some values that make this start to look okay. Now it looks like mine, including with the font. But then to fix that, there's this other thing called the XSH here. And it seems to be like some kind of sweet spot set of cycles here that corrects everything. I need to figure out what this XSH is and em emulate that as well. <laughs> Zed shell. Oh, okay, here we go. So Malban posted here. In the last two weeks, I hacked together VID, V-I-D-E. I guess it stands for Vectrex IDE. I think I just clued in. <laughs> I wonder if you pronounce it like V-I-D-E or, I don't know how he pronounces it. That totally makes sense, Vectrex IDE. Anyway, but nonetheless, so it looks like this was posted on January 26, 2016. So that's when he actually started doing this. Okay, so I saw a men mention of XSH here. Uh, here we go. Spinball clean sweep. This seems, as I guessed 18 years ago, to be an issue with the analog hardware reacting on changes not immediately but rather with a timed offset. Introducing timed offsets to XSH, YSH, and RAM resolved most of the vector misplacements. One interesting thing is, is, the, uh, is that it appears that the ramp reacts with different timing offsets if it is switched on or off. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is interesting. Moonlander text. One very clever homebrew developer invented his own text display routine, which confuses most emulators. The BIOS routine displays text like a typewriter, right? All right. is funny. So um, maybe it's these it's these offsets here. y-axis integrator hey mooballs a delay in CPU cycles the data written to the via or or is taking to reach the XSH analog storage ah oh you found this see that's exactly where I was I'm, I, I was right where where you're saying see here we set the value to the x-axis integrator immediately from port A. And you're saying that there's a delay from the time that this value is in port A to the time it gets written into this velocity vector. So something like 10 cycles, eh? Do you mind sharing that link just so that I can uh, bring it up? And thanks for looking. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
Ah, see, this is what I was looking for. <laughs> I was trying to find the page in the help that explains the, uh, the settings. I see your Google Foo is better than mine. XSH. A delay in CPU cycles the data written to the via ORA is taking to reach the XSH analog storage. Okay. I'm trying to think about what's the right way to implement this kind of delay. Like, is it kind? Of, I'm guessing then it's kind of like a stream of data where, like, if um, is it is it the case that basically if we think of time like this and you know we write a value in there like 10 and then later on we write 20 and then maybe soon after we write 34 and then later we rewrite you know, I don't know 23 and is it just that you know this stream of data will we will just be written some number of cycles later in this way I assume that's what it means or is it like you know if within some amount of time you replace that like how does it I'm trying to think hardware wise what's going, what's going on there is it more like every certain number of cycles it latches the value from RA into the integrator hardware rather than thinking of it more like a stream of data that's going through. Maybe that's more what it is. We introduce a delay for how for when it pulls the latest value and, and updates itself from it. This definitely makes this a lot more messy, that's for sure. It's kind of nice to be able to just <laughs> write the value this way, but let's see here, update integrators. I think the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to try to replace this vector 2 with a little wrapper. Yeah, let's try that.
have no idea what I should call this, but I'm just gonna work through this a little bit and we'll see where, where this takes us. So I'm seeing something like, Okay, so basically I'm trying to make some kind of like, I don't know, I call that a value store, but that's not a good name. Maybe it's like a, it's like what he's referring to here when he says the analog storage, you know? Maybe we'll call it that, you know, like a analog value store or something. And the idea that is that it takes some time for the value to be updated. So when you write a value to it, we just store it and we reset our cycles left. Like that. Now, of course, we need to update this guy. because it's like not a uh, sign value. Okay, so if we have cycles left, here is where I make sure, this is my little trick to keep it so that we don't go into the negatives, is I'll just take the smaller between cycles and cycles left. So if cycles is larger than cycles left, we don't wanna be subtracting and going in like underflow. So by taking the smaller of the two, 
So let's say we had uh, 10 cycles to remove, but we only had two cycles left, this would become two. In, in truth, this was not gonna happen because I'm actually gonna call this every for every cycle. So I can, I can almost do like, a, instead of an update this way, I can maybe just make a simpler function just called like on cycle maybe. Maybe I'll just do that. It, it won't match up necessarily with my other functions, but it's okay. And we'll do this. If cycle is left, it's greater than zero. Then if it becomes zero, so let's do this and value becomes next value. Oops. And then finally, I need a way to get the value. And I'll make an implicit cast as well. Okay, so I think this should do the trick. So what we'll do is we won't use velocity as it stands here, we'll just go like this. And we'll say uh, x and we'll use as a data type what was I using for my vectors? These are floats, aren't they? I guess I'll make them floats. Let's see. <clears throat> so this would become velocity x. Here is velocity y. And then here, what we'll do is velocity from velocity x and velocity y let's see if this even builds and I'm gonna need to update those analog stores okay so yeah I need some memory for this should be analog value store return star this technically maybe yeah all right and 
that's actually compiled. That's cool. Now, let me make sure to update those values. So I've got to put those in my update every cycle. This is what I meant that I, that's not the pattern I follow. My timers and my shift registers all get an update call with the number of cycles, which is always one right now. But that's kind of like inefficient. I have a lot of work in there in case I get more than one cycle, but I never do. So I'll probably rewrite those and just be like on cycle or maybe update cycle, I don't know what. Okay, let's just see if this actually does anything. Right now it's set to zero, so it should have no effect. Like we would be updating these immediately, but then we'll try and mess around with uh, putting in delays in there. And it's not working. <laughs> Um, to be honest, I'm not that surprised. Uh, let's see here. Oh, you know what? It's because of the zero, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. If the value starts off as zero, then it never gets the value it's supposed to get. but whatever okay that's cool so now let's try and mess around with with the velocity X cycles and we're gonna go into our or where is it? Frame update. Let's add another MGUI slider this time. I'm gonna say velocity x cycles. And we'll pass it. Oh yeah, I guess I can't really make it a static. Yeah, that's not gonna work. to be a proper data member. Okay, I'm just gonna hack this for now. Um, so then in that case, I will grab velocity x dot cycles update value, and we'll say you can go from zero to, I don't know, 30. So if this builds and it doesn't, oh, because it's a float. Yeah, we want a float slider, I guess. Although technically I really want an in slider here. It really doesn't make sense to make this float. And I should just kind of cast. Yeah, let me let me change this. These should really just be, um, I don't know, big UN32s. And then it's going to complain about casting from float requires a narrowing conversion. Yes, that is true. loss of data mm -hmm. just 
cast them. What is the problem? All right. Hmm. All right. So, I mean, I'm gonna undo this. I'm gonna go back to float. I have another idea. What we will do instead is we will make a. We'll do it here. I'll just say int velocity x cycles. Pass that here. Wow, that is going nuts. Yeah, this is not working. It's kind of cool, though. <laughs> um, what is going on here? Part A is 171, and minus 85. That's not going to work. This was 171 again. Let's just see what happens. Ah, optimized. Okay, let's just build and debug. Oh no, actually that was correct. Yeah, yeah, of course. That was totally correct. There's nothing wrong with that. 171 is greater than 128, it's a negative value. It's exactly what we expect. Like if I have 171 here, we step, velocity here should be minus 85. That's correct. That's why we cast here. 85 so that's fine oh I'm such an idiot 
I'm, I'm saying the wrong thing. There we go. That's what I meant to set. It's because we were crushing the value of the cycles to update. Uh, conversion from flow to cycles T possible loss of data. Really? All right, UN64T. Actually, probably don't even need a cast here now that I think about it. Let's go for gold. Let's go to release with debug info. No more breakpoints. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it looks like we're back to expected. And look at that. Introducing some delay. Oh, just going back to. Let me, uh, it needs to remember the previous value. I guess I could always do this. There we go. This might need a cast though, a down cast. Yeah. Okay, this is the moment of truth. So let's put this to five, six or five, I guess. Looks like five or six are the magic numbers right now. And I think we had seven and like 11 or something before. Uh, and then we want to maybe mess around with this a bit more. Oh no, this is the wrong thing here. This is what I want to play with. See at the top it clips here, which is really rather annoying. about that clipping there. Why would it clip? Because this actually looks pretty good. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's what it's supposed to look like with this kind of slightly italicized look. This actually looks pretty good. The only thing I have now is this clipping at the top, which is a bit strange. Wow, we are very close. It's really close. Let me look again at this one. Maybe less pronounced the italicizing of the text, but there's a still somewhat. Hmm. 
Yeah, a lot of similarity now. I can make mine smaller and try to get to a comparable size here. So, yeah, I just have this issue with the clipping at the top, which... I think what that might be actually is that I, because now that I have delays, it means that my vector beam can move beyond the usual limits. So I didn't have any, uh, yeah, I don't do any kind of clamping on the position because previously I, I figured it was not possible to have it move past it, but now with delays, it is possible. So maybe I just need to put some clamping on position. I'm guessing I'm, I'm getting out of the range. Um, it's a, was it again? It's like 256 by 256, is it? I think I need to clamp my, my position. Yeah, 256, where the positions here are um, minus 128 to 127 in both directions. Do I have a clamp somewhere? So we have a stood clamp, so that's good. Min value. Float and and right. So let's see if this changes things. So that's more interesting. So let's try and tweak these a bit. Yeah, so now we're clamping. So now the top does not get cut off anymore. Maybe like this? Or maybe, yeah. Yeah, I'm not too sure about the this, this kind of, yeah, let me check something. Okay. 
This is seriously slow. I think I'm destroying my CPU over here. I just want to get a screenshot of, yeah, here we go. Okay, so it's not super italicized like what mine looks like. So with a bit of tweaking, we might be able to get to get there. Yeah, this is pretty straight. All right, close that. Yeah, I don't know if I can have my cake and eat it too here. It's like as soon as I shift these to try and get the, the map to look right, I get to a range where all of a sudden my shifting the velocity does not keep the value straight. So close. I guess I just have still other timing issues that I can't get it perfect. Wow, one cycle from eight to nine causes such a huge change. See, I'm, I'm at the point where, yeah, like every, I mean, I guess it makes sense. This controls the change in, like when the uh, X integrator sees its value And for anything raster, that, that should have, well, I guess for anything that's text related in this case, that has a pretty big effect. Yeah, like it or not, I keep just to get to get the maze to look good. I'm always hovering around the same values here. It's something like this: seven, twelve, or six, eleven.
so right now with my current timings this is about as close as I can get So let's say we set all on this here, 5, 10, and 6. Hey Pyro, how's it going? You're catching me near the end of my stream. Pretty good. Been working on getting clean sweep to work, which has been rather interesting. It's all about uh, messing around with with uh, analog cycle timings. You have the worst timing. Well, I mean, we're I guess we're in different time zones, so it's not a big surprise, right? So let's try a different game. Just want to see what what this would look like um, if we play. Uh, let's see, extract and flat. You're six hours ahead of Canada, yeah. So. Yeah, not a huge surprise that we're not quite aligned. This looks pretty good. Actually, it looks really good. Everything's fairly aligned there. Let's try um, Berserk. That's the one I was trying to remember before. This is the one that that we always had issues with, like the characters looking rather squished. Ah, oh, look at that! Look how huge they look. Wow. Hey, this looks pretty good. <laughs> I think we like just fixed a bunch of issues. But I worked night shift previous days, so I'm still awake now. Oh, that's good. So this is cool. So. We don't have squished characters anymore. I actually, I mean, I'm not sure if they're supposed to be this large. They seem a little bit large to me. But let's just get a, get a quick look here. Huh, yeah, maybe not. Oops. Or maybe 
a bit. I don't know. It's always hard to tell with scale and stuff. And I mean, I don't have as thick lines right now. My glow effect is not as pronounced. Let me see if I can make it more pronounced and try to match it a bit more. It's a little bit closer, but not quite there. See, so yeah, the number here, that looks pretty good. Yeah, they look a little bit big, but very, very close. Got you, humanoid. Yes, I did manage to fix Bedlam. That was uh, last week. If I guess you didn't catch the last stream, but uh, it was actually really quite interesting, the, the rabbit hole I went down. And... Um, if you watch like near the end of the stream, I was I was nearly done and I was like, okay, we're getting close, we're getting close. And I, I started writing notes uh, on a notepad instance, just to like kind of make some notes for myself for the next time. And in writing the notes, kind of like when you, you know, rubber duck debugging, in writing the notes, I kind of like hit on, hey, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. And then after that, I was able to figure out the bug and just fix it. So that was pretty cool. So if you want to watch that episode, it's, uh, it's pretty fun. Yeah, it, like all of it happens in the like last 10 minutes or something. I wonder if we'll see the Got You Humanoid screen anywhere. Just has to die. Welcome to the enrichment center. First up, conversion gel. The light gives you lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> Let's all stay positive and do some science. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that looks not quite the same size, but very close. So yeah, this, this stream is also very interesting. We, basically, we worked on uh, introducing delays um, on, in the VIA for, uh, for a couple of things. Um, Pretty cool. This is the real thing. Yeah, we're getting quite close. Um, yeah, so this introduced a bunch of delays on the the VIA chip for the ramp up and the ramp down of the beam, and for when the uh, X and Y integrators see their values. Um, and this came from having read this blog post from Malba, Malban, Malban about uh, getting clean sweep uh, to work properly. <laughs> he writes, Vectrex emulators, why we hate clean sweep. So this is, this is a game always, you know, the, the, one of the ones that's difficult to emulate because it's all timing based. It's all about the number of cycles it takes and he basically figured out, so you know, huge kudos to, uh, to Malban. I, I don't think I would have figured this out without his help here. I just read through this and he shows how he introduced delays for um, the ramp, the, the beam there. So when it turns on, there's like a delay before it actually starts moving. 
or starts drawing, I should say, and there's also a ramp before it's, it stops drawing. So, uh, so yeah, with I introduced these delays, these two, and uh, not the other ones. He has a bunch of delays, but the only ones I played with are ramp on, ramp off, and with uh, being able to like when you write an, an X value for the X integrator, it takes some number of cycles, in my case six or so, um, before it actually makes it. And yeah, here you can see the difference, right? With, with the maze drawing where he puts in some delays. Um, and yeah, and so the X integrator also needed a value in there. So with all those extra cycles in there, these delays, um, I actually got my, my emulator to play um, to play a, um, sorry, clean sweep. I'm getting a bit tired. <laughs> and there was one more I wanted to check, which was, um, what was it called? Um, Star Trek. Because Star Trek, I, I remember having made a note about it also having some mess ups with the bottom. Oh, actually, let me restart it because I mess around with this, these values. So just since you're here, just to show you like this is this is clean sweep and I'll show you what clean sweep looked like when I was initially trying to get it to work and I had no no delay. So this is, it looks like this now. It's not perfect, but it's playable, you know? There's some weird offsets here and there, but it's pretty good, right? But this is what it actually looked like before. Like that. So now it's you know with a couple of, of delays in there and it starts to look a bit better. I forget what my values were. Something like this. Five, five, ten, and six, okay. So let me just try Star Trek and then I'm gonna stop. So Star Trek, yeah, because I had made a note about Star Trek in my compatibility list. Font render not perfect, bars crooked at the bottom. So let's see if that's still the case. So the bars are still crooked, but the font render definitely looks looks quite good. Exactly, exactly. Well, that's the, that's the interesting bit, right? Up until now, I didn't have any delays whatsoever. And, um, and you know, most games look pretty good, right? But like I was explaining earlier on the stream, the reason for that is, is that, uh, it's like some kind of warp zone or something, um, is that most games use the BIOS to do all their rendering. And the BIOS kind of like, you know, it provides like a high level, um, abstraction for how for drawing so you can almost like forget about the analog hardware and it does that by introducing lots of delays um, to make sure the beam gets to where it's supposed to get but games like like clean sweep they they do their own rendering and their own timings um, they don't use the timer one like most games use timer one and the shift register to draw vectors whereas for for clean sweep, as the, that blog post was explaining, um, it doesn't do the timer one thing, it does its own thing. It says, I'm gonna turn on and off the beam so that it can draw as many lines as it needs to because it has to draw so many. That's a game just full of lines, right, on screen, uh, more than most games. And so to be able to do that, they, they took control of, uh, of the beam themselves. And then they tweaked it and tweaked it with, you know, they, they apparently added some extra time uh, knowing that it took some time for the beam to turn on and to, to, to ramp up and to ramp, ramp down and they kind of like uh, experimented until it looked good on the real hardware so that's a game that just yeah you have to to emulate those kinds of analog timings so that's what I've been doing tonight okay so I'm gonna stop here uh, I'm not gonna commit this just yet I, I want to go through it and you know, 
maybe uh, clean it up a little bit because I kind of hacked some things together and move this into a file and stuff like that but um, <clears throat> yeah I should be committing this soon if not I'll do it on Wednesday when I stream again so yeah um, so thanks guys for watching and I will catch you on Wednesday thanks a lot and take care guys <laughs>